Let's talk about Palantir and let's talk about a problem that Palantir is experiencing right now. No, I'm not talking about the fact that the stock is expensive. It's up 240% year to date, has a market cap of $133 billion. It's up actually 100% in the last three months, has a forward P of 128.4 times. And yes, if we still look at what the analysts are expecting, the analysts still think that this company is not really expected to grow close to 30% year over year. If you look at fiscal year 2024, sales growth of around 25.47%. Looking at fiscal 2025, growth of 24.18%. And then looking at fiscal 2026, growth closer to 21% year over year. Now, I do want to say one thing is that these things have been revised on the upside. So previously, before the latest earnings report, Revenue for fiscal 2025, they expected it to come at $3.32 billion. It now sits at $3.47 billion. That's why you're seeing right now 24% year-over-year growth. Previously, it was closer to 21-22% or so. Now, despite some analysts upgrading their price target, the average analyst price target still sits 36.3% lower than the price we're at today. We saw a huge jump from $28.21 to now an average of $37.20 after the earnings report. But of course, the stock just kept going up and up and up. We're now at actually $58.7. Now, I'm not here to tell you if you should sell your shares in Palantir, take profits, buy now or whatnot. That's up to you. I have a position in Palantir. I'm not going to lie to you. I did take some profits on Friday. My cash pile is increasing because one, I see my portfolio reaching new all-time highs each and every day. That's great. But when you look at the market, when you look at the stocks, a lot of stocks right now, are in my opinion a little overextended and so I'm increasing my cash pile because I do think that opportunities will arise. Does that mean that the stocks will crash tomorrow or the day after that or the day after that? No, that's why I still have a big position in most of these companies. But I did increase my cash pile, that's just what I'm doing right now. You should not follow whatever I'm doing, it's just me sharing my opinion. So. Let's jump into the Palantir stuff right now, the actual numbers of what have happened and actually what management has told us in the past, not just in the recent earnings call, but we're going to go back to Q1 as well because that's when they already warned us of what's going to happen. So stay tuned for that. Like, subscribe to all of that. We really appreciate it. If you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and in the pinned comment with the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to fool.com for slash couch investor. Thank you very much. I'll first start, of course, with the first comment of Alex Karp. So we absolutely eviscerated this quarter, driven by unrelenting AI demand that won't slow down. This is a US-driven AI revolution that has taken full hold. The world will be divided between AI haves and have-nots. At Palantir, we plan to power the winners. So what did we get? Well, we got revenue that's back at 30% growth year over year. Income from operations, 16%. Adjusted income from operations, 38%. I mean, you've seen these numbers already, so I'm not going to repeat it again and again and again. Plus, it's on the screen, so you can always pause the video. Now, without the strategic investments, right, the SPAC effect, revenue would have increased 32%. Going even further and mentioning these two segments, right? Everybody's excited about commercial, AIP bootcamp, stuff like that. Okay, that's great. Revenue for commercial has increased 27% year over year. But then, I don't know why, but a lot of people did forget about the government side of things, which is still bigger than commercial. And this one is actually growing quite quickly and has been growing, especially in the United States, has been growing faster and faster each and every quarter. Year-over-year -year growth for government revenue increased 33%. And as I said, US government has been accelerating already since Q1. Q1, we've seen 12% year-over-year -year growth, then acceleration 24% year-over-year -year growth in Q2, and now we're sitting at a 40% year-over-year growth in Q3. What's going to happen in Q4? Now, yeah, I know, you might say, okay, but these are increases over a low base, which I agree because government in 2023 was quite weak. Management did say that in 2024, they expect it to reaccelerate. That's exactly what we're seeing right now. But I do still think that US government 
is going to become bigger and bigger and bigger as the defense budget gets spent more on software primes and more on these smaller startups that can actually deliver the goods for less and much less than the primes. Overall, we also saw deals continue to grow. In Q2, we saw 96 deals. Now we're seeing 104 deals. Then we also saw that total RPO, quarter over quarter growth continues to accelerate. Billings is still above 14% growth quarter over quarter. So that's nice. We also see that net dollar retention was at 118%. And we're still not seeing the full effects of the ramp up of boot camps because, well, you need to be a client of theirs for the last 12 months. So we're definitely going to see that number increase, or at least that's what I'm expecting in the coming quarters. Then rule of 40, well, we're sitting at 68%. And so people were saying or alluding to the fact that maybe, maybe they should reduce rule of 40 a little bit to maybe 50% or so and try and accelerate growth even more. More on that in just a second for Q4. They expect revenue to come between 667 million and 771 million. The consensus numbers are for 27.6% year over year growth, which is a bit above this high end number, which is around $776 million. So we should expect again a 30% year over year growth quarter in Q4. Of course, now the year over year comparisons will become, well, more difficult than before. So 30% growth in Q4 to me will be more impressive than a 30% growth in Q3. Now, if we go and look at one of the great charts that Emir made, follow him on YouTube and on X, he's a great, great guy, great information as always. So thank you for these charts. So if you look at US commercial customers, well, the increase quarter over quarter continues to come down. It has been coming down since Q4 2023, quarter over quarter growth, but year over year, we have seen it top here in Q2, 83% year-over-year growth. Of course, that was on top of just 35% year-over-year growth. Then Q3 2023 was 37% year-over-year growth. We're now at 77% year-over-year growth. Still amazing growth. Now, if we look at the net addition of customers in each of these quarters, so we saw a reacceleration in growth in Q4 2023 added 44 customers, then in Q1, 57, so that's great. But then Q2, 39, and now Q3, only 36. So a lot of people freak out about this, and I mean, rightfully so, you're paying a huge premium on this company, plus this stock, for I say, plus you are expecting it to grow, AIP bootcamp successful, etc., etc. So why, why aren't we seeing this in the total customer growth, right? What's happening here? Well, maybe you already know the answer because you've watched plenty of other videos or you read it on X, but let me show you something. If we go and look at what Alex Karp said in the recent quarter, he said the following, this is again going back to the rule of 40 thing, which in this case is rule of 68, slowing it down a little bit to grow even more. So he says here, get that rule of 68 down to 50 and maybe you can grow even more. But in fact, that way of looking at a business misunderstands the way in which Palantir builds. We believe by investing and we know at this point, instead of trying to have 10,000 clients, all of whom hate you, that's kind of what people want. 10,000 clients that hate you, but they can't give you a product. We want a smaller number of the world's best partners that quite frankly are dominating with our product. And the way you do that is by having, by not blowing up your margin and getting 10,000 salespeople, it's actually by going deeper on the product. And in fact, what we see is the deeper and the better the product, the more we drive sales, the more we have our cultural singular advantage as Palantir, not as a commodity product. It's like we are not a commodity. We do not want our customers to be commodities. We want them to be individual titans. This is a good Good word to use, Titans, because of the Titan deal that they won. Okay, never mind. So we want them to be individual Titans that are dominating their industry or the battlefield. Okay, some folks might say, okay, this is just him downplaying the struggles of them not growing fast enough or attracting more and more customers, etc., etc. But as we've seen with plenty of other companies, you're trying to attract quality, not always quantity. Now, in this case, it's not like they're not growing anymore. No. They are growing, but maybe, yes, maybe they could have grown 
much quicker. Now let me show you a little bit as to why we are seeing a little bit of slowdown. So they say here, we generated $138 million in international commercial revenue in the third quarter, representing 3% growth year over year, but a 7% sequential decline as a result of continued headwinds in Europe and a step down in revenue from a government-sponsored enterprise in the Middle East. Despite those headwinds, we continue to build on our transformational work with some of our largest international customers, including signing a multi-year renewal with BP. We also continue to capitalize on targeted growth opportunities in Asia, the Middle East, and beyond. Now, let's go back to Q1 earnings call. So, first quarter US commercial revenue grew 40% year over year and 14% sequentially to $150 million, surpassing international commercial revenue for the first time. Excluding revenue from strategic commercial contracts, first quarter US commercial revenue grew 68% year over year and 22% sequentially. We do have headwinds in Europe, 16% of our business is in Europe. Europe is gliding towards 0% GDP growth over the next couple of years. That is a problem for us. There is also no easy remedy for that. It is also the case that your commercial surpassed European commercial and we see that as favorable, and they think in general that this is just Palantir's time. So that's basically the answer, right? US commercial is strong and growing quite quickly, but the problem is that, well, Europe is not doing well at all, and this is not something new, this is something that they mentioned in Q1. And since US commercial is already becoming bigger and bigger than the European part, it is no surprise that we are adding less and less customers because, well, you've got one part that is basically dragging those numbers down a little bit. It would be great if Europe started to grow. Then we would see even faster growth for Palantir, especially on the commercial side of things. Now, I do want to play the devil's advocate here and say that if US is doing so, so well, and has become much bigger than European part of the business, then we should continue to add more and more customers despite Europe being weak. And I think that's what we're going to see in the coming quarters as US commercial becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. And then eventually you're going to have some tailwinds from Europe and from other markets internationally as well. But as of now, I still think that You've got commercial that is growing quite quickly, but let's not sleep on the government side of things. And I think government will just continue to grow and grow and grow as they get a bigger chunk. Because let's let's wind, rewind a little bit. Government contracts, although you might not get them as many as commercial ones, but once you start getting a handful of those contracts, usually those contracts have quite a lot of zeros attached to it. So yeah. Government is going to be huge for Palantir. Now, going back to the last part here, and that's looking at the chart. Palantir, of course, had an amazing week. You see here this huge, huge green candle. I mean, the stock did go down a little bit under the 20-day moving average before they reported their earnings results. And then since then, well, great earnings, stock went up. Then we've got election results, and then the stock market went just crazy. And so we closed close to $60. Now, as you can see right here, again, I'll repeat myself again and again, RSI can stay overbought for quite a long time, right? We started being overbought here September 9th, where the stock was close to, what was it here? $32 or so, and we're now at $58. So as you can see, we can stay overbought for a longer period of time. Now, are we due to a pullback? In my opinion, yes, not just for Palantir, but for the overall market. When will that happen? I don't know, but I'm ready. I've got cash. So whenever it will happen, great. I'll take the opportunity to add more. So overall, that's about it. If you enjoyed this type of video, leave it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you have not. Share your thoughts down in the comment section below. Like, subscribe, do all of that. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.